Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to combine technology and art to create truly amazing experiences for their players. We also create scenes and modular systems that you can use without any setup. If you're a DM that likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry VTT and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Subscribe to our channel to keep up with our content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also get access to everything that we've ever made. We're back automating Foundry today, this time with a new way to create vehicles using Token Attacher and Monk's Active Tile Triggers. Check the timestamps in the description for all the steps along the way. First up, if you're not familiar with Token Attacher, check our tutorial in the card on screen. Token Attacher allows you to attach elements to a token and move them around, like this cart and horse that we've assembled. If we want our player character here to be able to move with the cart, we can attach them to the control token for that cart, then they will move along with the other elements. Unfortunately though, we can't move our character around while they're attached, and we have to open up this attaching UI or use another macro in order to detach that player. So what we want to do is take advantage of these two macros in Token Attacher, and they are Mount Up and Stop Follow. Mount Up is a special type of attachment that allows some movement on the part of the players, and that's what we'll be using to make the actual vehicle work here. We're also going to use Stop Follow in order to end that condition. The first thing we're going to do is bring in some initial setup pieces. I'm bringing in a vehicle actor that just has a informational image to it so that I can see it well, and I'm adjusting it to fit the size of the area I want my tokens to be in. I'm marking it as hidden and putting it into place. Then I'm also going to go ahead and bring in my tile that is going to be used for the actual application of these macros. I'm going to go ahead and just use a set of core icons from Foundry. You can use whatever icons you like. It doesn't really matter what your tile is. Just pick something that is intuitive for you and your players, as this is going to be an on-click tile. So when someone clicks on it, that is when the token will be attached or detached here. With our tile in, we're going to go ahead and do some of the basic prep, such as setting that active status and the on-click trigger for all of these actions and making sure that everything is functional there, we'll go ahead and begin adding in our steps. We're going to do our classic distance filter so that only people who are close to the cart will actually hop inside. And we'll just do that by doing a filter on distance and then checking our entity account so that if someone is clicking on it and they're too far away, the tile will stop. Next, I'm going to go down and use this relatively new target feature from Monk's Active Tile Triggers, and I'm going to select the Clear option. This is really important for making sure that we're following and mounting the correct thing. And I can demonstrate that here with the Mount Up and Stop Follow commands. In order to actually mount or follow something, you need to first target it. So you see when I activate that macro, I am now able to move around within the horse's space, but no further than that. And Mount Up will actually yoink me on top of that horse. So to make sure that we're mounting the appropriate actor, we need to clear our targets. Next, we're going to actually target the correct actor here, which is going to be our vehicle actor. And we're just gonna use the select entity for that. You could also use tagger and tag this particular vehicle. And now we're using the tile and we can see that if we click on it and we're too far away, nothing happens. But if we're closer and we click on it, then we target that particular actor. We're going to now run a macro, and all we need to do here is select the token attacher mount up macro that we have imported previously. And this is what will allow us to mount the vehicle actor so that when we are mounted on it, then when the vehicle actor moves, so too do we, but we cannot move outside of its space. Now that said, we're not able to move around with the cart yet because we haven't attached that vehicle actor. When we're done, we can use the stop follow macro making sure that we're still targeting the vehicle actor, and then we will dismount. Just like before where targeting can be problematic, 
we want to clear our targets after we have already completed the mount up macro. That way it's not obtrusive for combat, etc. and also keeps the magic pretty well hidden from players. And I'm also going to go ahead now and I'm going to duplicate our active tile and I'm going to make another version of it that is the dismount. I just changed the icon to make it more intuitive. And the only thing we need to change here actually is just switch from the mount up to stop follow macro in our run macro action. And now we can clear our targets and make sure we're on the select tool, go up, mount onto the vehicle actor and move around. And then when we want to hop off, we can just click on the dismount and we can move freely about the wagon without being pulled along it. And as we mentioned previously, in order to move with a the cart, then we need to actually select the vehicle actor and attach it to our control token. So now when the control token moves, so too does the vehicle actor. And now when we mount the vehicle actor, we can take our control token for the cart and move everything all together, maintaining rotation as we move. We have a very easy, very simple and intuitive vehicle for us and our players to use on our maps. Some other upgrades that you can do include using Tagger. As I mentioned previously, you can use that to specify your token. And here I've added the number to the tag for the cart vehicle actor and also in the target. And this number in curly brackets is what allows us to iterate whenever we drag in this prefab. So I've saved it to an actor and now I've dragged it in. It's the exact same prefab, but you'll notice that if I drag it in, it now has cart vehicles dash one. So it's iterated that number starting from one and it will count up. So I can have 50 of these cards here and they'll all function independently because we're using Tagger to power those different pieces. It's also worth knowing that if you want these wagons to be deployable on multiple scenes, you will need to use Tagger in some form or another, whether you go ahead and use the wildcard feature or not. If you want to learn more about the wildcard feature, check out this earlier installment in the Automating Foundry series that BaileyWiki did on screen in the card now. Some other things to watch out for as you're doing this is having multiple targets. And this is also why it's important for us to clear things. If we have more than one target, then we actually can't stop following or mount up any of these selections. We have to have only one target. Another consideration is, say I wanted this particular vehicle to span the entire size of the cart, go from basically the driver's seat to the back or just past the horse to the back. And I can change the dimensions of my cart and make that vehicle actor a four wide by two tall, and I'll mount that just fine and I can move around. But once I start rotating, we'll notice that there's this little red hitbox that pops up every now and then. This is actually the tokens area. And you'll notice that it's not rotating with the artwork of the token. This is unfortunately just a limitation of how Foundry handles some of the bounding boxes for tokens. And so you can see that it's really apparent when we have rotated 90 degrees and we're able to extend this far off of the cart. So when you're creating these simple vehicles, make sure that you are using uh, square shapes so that it is easy to mount and dismount and you're not getting those unintuitive hitboxes. If we do really want this enlarged footprint, we can expand that actor to a four x four and then it will behave much more normally as we rotate around. That said, this does give significantly more area for a mounted token to move around, so that might not be desirable. An advanced solution for these non-square vehicles is to use these interactive dialog box oriented mount and dismount tiles to mount a token where you're not actually constrained to the token's bounding box. Here we are following or mounting the galleon steering token over here that's not even on the ship. In order to have this freedom of movement, we actually have to make a slightly altered version of token attachers mount up macro. And this really opens up the possibilities. Today, I'm not gonna go into the details on how to create this. I'm instead going to post the tile setups here for you to pause on screen. That way you can take notes or replicate them in your own games, including the dialog boxes, etc. And again, I wanna call out that this boarding tile setup calls a different macro from the original one. And it's actually not included in the token attacher example macros. For disembarking, it's a lot simpler. All we need to do is switch back to our same old T 
ta stop follow macro, and we'll also want to update our dialog here too. Finally, we have the unconstrained macro. It is a copy of the ta mount up macro. The important thing down here is highlighted where I've changed the constraint type to unconstrained. I've also commented out the sections that move the mounting token to the vehicle. That concludes our automating foundry tutorial on the new way to create vehicles. We use token attacher to create our vehicle itself and then use monk's active tile triggers to trigger the macros from token attacher that are mount up and stop follow in order to have players easily and intuitively climb aboard a vehicle, move around freely within that vehicle, but still move with the vehicle as it changed throughout the scene. We then also explored some more advanced options such as using tagger to have these be deployable and have multiple iterations of them living on the same scene. We also went over common pitfalls with multiple targeting and having oddly shaped token bounding boxes. And we took a look at an advanced application using dialog boxes for the ship. If you want to see a full tutorial on how to do the tiles for the ships and some other advanced vehicle configurations, please let me know in the comments down below. This has been Zephyr for the BaileyWiki channel. Thanks so much for watching, happy automating, and have a good one.